In this clip, I will show you a series of components that help you quickly generate a cityscape within Rhino. First of all, let's introduce the subparcel component. The first input takes in the plot boundary, and just to clarify by plot, I mean a large piece of land, and then blocks are city blocks, and then parcels are, of course, the uh, subdivision of a city block. What I'm doing here is drawing these lines as center lines of roads. These roads will help me divide the large plot. I have to set those as multiple curves into the C. And then to get an idea of the width, I can use uh, 15 for the parcel. It will be used as a guide to uh, determine the size of the parcels. As you can see here, each block is subdivided into uh, parcels. L output will give me the curves representing the city blocks, which I can use to offset so that we can see the width of streets. And of course here we have to make sure that we're offsetting in the right direction, which can be done by setting my number negative now that you see the width of uh, streets. In order to offset the parcels as well, we can use a region intersection component. In conjunction with the offset blocks, and there we can have all the parcels also offset from the center line of the road. And then next we can use a offset massing component from the PCPA GH toolbar, which will take these uh, boundary curves as a starting point, and then selectively offset the four sides or however many sides there are. And then we need to provide a offset distance, 5. And then of course the J input is a randomization factor. Right now it's set on 0. Uh, let's bump that up to 0.2. So some of these shapes are of different depth. And you can see some of them are closed courtyard, some of them are L shapes, parallel bars or single bars. And of course I'm treating the parcels as if they are city blocks. Uh, and you can imagine those there are gaps between those uh, blocks and it will be quite an organic kind of a city fabric. And now let's use uh, a set of extrusions to make them into city massings. And now is a good time to introduce the arbitrary number component, which is essentially the random number component of Grasshopper. However, this is not determined by a seed number. You can call it a even one step closer to truly randomness. So you need to provide the number of random numbers that you need to get and a range within which the numbers will fall. can put in a range of 12 to 20 just as a, a quick way to show some height. Use those as the basis and then the direction vector. And you can see the component cap uh, let's disable some of the other previews. Now you can see the results of those massings. And uh, to see it better, I think let's try to uh, bake it first. You can immediately see that some of the closed courtyard didn't extrude correctly. The middle isn't carved out. And to solve that, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is, after you get the footprint curves, you need to feed those into a boundary surface component of Grasshopper. And that way, it will calculate the middle void. And then use those surfaces as a basis of extrusion, essentially going through the same process. And you will see at the end, 
If you bake the cap, you will see successful extrusions of the courtyard, closed courtyards. Now back to our workflow. We change around some of the parameters such as the height differences and recomputing it a couple times as well. You can see it is a arbitrary or let's say a random generator. So another component that I want to introduce is the array on polygon component. Rather than offsetting boundaries, this component will array a series of uh, rectangles of different sizes as building footprints. It will create an even more organic look for the fabric of the city. You can see right here uh, all the blocks are hugging the street front and it's very much the, the kind of city fabric that you see in old cities of uh, Europe or Asia or a lot of different places. So if we flatten that list and push those through the same kind of extrusion process, you will, see the, you will get the massing blocks of these buildings. And of course you can put some finishing touches on it just so it looks uh, more realistic in a way. And selectively you can substitute some of the blocks with a more ad hoc shape creations. You can even see the kind of corridor of the streets cutting through the city, the thoroughfares. So there you have it, the medieval city. So lastly, let's introduce a data store component. Because a lot of these randomization algorithms are not controlled by seed, there is no way to retrieve an option after it's been uh, flushed by a recompute. So this component will let you attach data in whatever format, uh, shapes or numbers, attach those to a tag. And then you can attach many tags and each tag will correspond to that one particular option. So let's quickly make A, B and C tags. Let's say push A into the T input and it will say the key is not found. That's because I haven't clicked the button. After I click the button, I've associated letter A with those extruded boxes. Now if I change to B again, it's going to give me an error. I could associate it again by clicking the button. However, this is the same as option A. So let's clear that by right click on the, on the component and let's uh, assign A as whatever we have in the extrusion and then do a recompute so that the extrusions are different and then push B into the tag and then associate it with the option. So now if you toggle back and forth, you can see the two different options. We can even do a C option. This way you can see three different massing models. However, uh, beware that this component do save the geometry information within the grasshopper file. So the more options you put into, the larger the grasshopper file will get. Just so we can see them better, let's use a rendered preview. So here's a way to use a randomization algorithm without losing the ability to track your options.